Good morning, and welcome to the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist. We extend a warm welcome to all visitors and guests who join us at worship today. We come together today to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. Here are some parish announcements for the week. The schedule for Holy Week liturgies for the cathedral can be, be found on the back of the Order of Worship and in this weekend's bulletin. Flyers with the schedule for all the family of five parishes are also available at the doors of the church. The Christian women are hosting the St. Joseph Tavola, Tavolata and raffle on March 17th after the 10.30 a.m. Mass at St. Rita's. Please see the bulletin for more details. Please join us on Tuesday, March 19th at 6 p.m. at St. Peter's and Paul for Eucharistic Adoration. Please join us for an organ recital performed by Tybalt Fajol on Friday, March 22 at 7.30 p.m. in the cathedral. A reception will follow in the atrium. Excuse me on how pronouncing his name. Lights, camera, action. Registrations are open for the Catholic East Gala on May 3rd at 5.30 p.m. for more information. Please see the bulletin or contact the school office. The Open Door Cafe items are one of the following. Blankets, men's winter socks, or men's winter gloves. The items of the week for the Kinship Community Food Center and assorted cereal and oatmeal packets. The items of the month for Father Jean's Help Center are sweatpants, leggings, or basketball shorts. All the hymns and service music for today's Mass can be found in the order of worship. Coming together in the spirit of community, we invite you to stand and greet those around you.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the power of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, then this, the fifth Sunday of Lent, celebrating God's call of holiness to each one of us as we bring the mystery of our lives to the Lord for the transformative love that he brings us in forgiveness and mercy. Also, St. Patrick's Day today, St. Joseph's Day on Tuesday, the call of holiness with all the saints we gather this day asking for strength. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us any sin we might have, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son Jesus handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, He became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Word of the Lord in our minds, on our lips, always in our hearts. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor 
whoever serves me. I'm troubled now. Yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. Jesus said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made for us to be together. Let us rejoice and be glad this fifth Sunday of Lent, hearing from the 12th chapter of St. John this morning, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. We are well on our way to the great mysteries of Easter in which we ask not only for personal renewal, but renewal of our troubled world. In Jesus' name we gather. Can we please pray for anyone who's died from violence in our cities, our country, our world, always remembering people in areas of conflict like the Middle East or in the Ukraine or in Africa or our friends in Haiti or other areas. I also remember always at Holy Mass, I always remember people who die from poverty and hunger and want. Anyone in this world of ours who dies seemingly lost, forgotten, forsaken, in our charity, we include them in our Holy Mass. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. Their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. As I've been pastor and rector here for a while now, I, I have to be honest, person I miss very much, and I'm sure many of you miss, everyone, I miss Bishop Jeff Haynes, a good friend of mine who was pastor and rector here for many years and did such a wonderful job, and I really miss him, and I, I'm sure I send greetings from him to you, I see him at various things, but every once in a while I just think, just, he's such a good and holy man, and I think about how he helped me in terms of the transition. I have to tell you, he did one thing amongst many things in terms of the ease my transition here as the leader. But the one thing that he did that really is, I want to reflect on this morning, Bishop Jeff was responsible for putting the new roof on the cathedral and for getting all of you to pay for it. So that's, that's it's, it's just great. Uh, I, I basically have been here a while and this would have been my fourth major roofing project as a pastor and so I'm really glad. I want to thank him, but also anyone who gave to the Love One Another campaign or also everyone who gives in their regular stewardship to the parish here. Thank you so much. This beautiful building is able to stay because of kindness, generosity. So on behalf of the church, on behalf of the Archbishop, thank you for taking such good care of the Mother Church of the Archdiocese. I was thinking about that because about 20 years ago, I was, one of my tasks was to put a new roof on St. Hedwig's Church. If you remember, St. Hedwig's is on the corner of Brady and Humboldt. It was a big, big project, and it was an expensive project, and it had all the scaffolding up. And so at a certain point, uh, the contractor said, Father, do you want to go up the scaffolding? Do you want to go up the spire? And I was always fascinated with the spire because on the top of St. Hedwig's spire, is a ball, a huge ball. Actually, when you see it up close, it's, it's a six foot diameter copper ball with a cross placed firmly on it. We've seen that in religious imagery, the world, the cross. What we're celebrating here, Jesus, King of the universe, who takes care of his holy people. So they took me up there and they said, Father, you just want you to see that it's, it was magnificent. All of a sudden, one of the contractors said, Father, you know, we're right in the project now. If you wanted to, you could uh, 
you could have this ball and the cross. Maybe we want to suggest you, maybe get them gold leafed, put, put gold on them. And you know, I was like, wow. And they said, you know, it'd be great for your legacy as pastor of the East Side and everything. And, and I thought, wow, this is, this is something. And my usually inflated ego thought, well, I guess I got to think about it. And so all of a sudden they said, I said, well, give me some numbers. And then they got me the numbers, everyone. When I saw the numbers of what it would cost to put the gold leaf on that big globe in the cross, I heard two voices. One year I heard the voice of Jesus saying, are you crazy? <laughs> in the other ear though, everyone, I heard my father, Leo Kitsky, practical man, laborer for many years, all of a sudden I heard my father say, Timmy, <laughs> just paint it yellow. I think about it because I'm going to use that, that image of gold though because I did some research about gold because you know we do have gold crosses there are this very church has a gold cross on top of it I would pay part of my next paycheck that, that more than one or two of you are wearing a gold cross on your neck right now that sense that precious material but you know when I was up there looking down at the neighborhoods surrounding Brady Street and also at that point in my priestly tenure there I realized what was going on all of a sudden I realized that the real preciousness were the people who were looking at the cross but why do you have it so three factors that I think can transfer us because at this point in the gospel Jesus knows and especially at this point in Lent we are already on our way to Good Friday. Jesus is on the way to the cross. Jesus is on the way, indicating the type of bat, death he has. He's going to be lifted up on the cross in a seemingly shameful, awfully violent, and deeply divided way to be set before the world, not in glory, but in shame. So we have that goal. A couple of things I found out about gold, though, that I think is good. First of all, why we do things like gold, why we wear jewelry, why we have golden crosses on things. First of all, gold, one of its properties is it's absolutely malleable. Very easily to be pounded out, thinned out, placed out, smelted out, and very quickly preserves whatever shape is there. Whatever situation needs luster and cleanup. To himself, what a great image for us this morning as we listen to these holy scriptures from Jeremiah through St. Paul through the Gospel of St. John. The cross has to be malleable. Jesus, thousands of years ago, set on a cross, but already this morning, we are claiming that the cross of Jesus Christ is able to go into whatever situation is out there in terms of his faithful, but also in the world, the cross is malleable and adjusts to whatever situation needs salvation. Isn't it wonderful? We all have our personal crosses as we look at the cross, as we wear the cross, as we honor the cross, we realize what we're doing is we're saying we are participating in the cross. And each one of us, with whatever's going on, if I'd go around Mass this morning, you could all tell me, this is a cross I'm carrying right now. I think that's what we have to identify in these London. What are the crosses we're bearing right now? Because what Jesus is telling us this day, hold on to the malleability of my cross, which can transform your crosses, to realize what we're called to do is to hold on not to our own crosses, but like Jesus in his cross, to let go to the cross of glory, to open our arms to Jesus, to hold tightly to his sacrifice for us. Whatever cross we're doing right now, Jesus is right there next to us, walking with us. So everyone, hold tightly to the cross, the golden cross of Jesus. So our opening song says, abide with me, Lord, especially when I need you the most. And the wonder of the grace of what Jesus did on the cross, it's malleable. He understands each and every complex human situation, not only on personal ones, but obviously the craziness of all the crosses that our world is going through right now. The cross of Jesus Christ reigns supreme. So, malleability. Second thing I discovered about gold and why they use it, 
outside and stuff, it is non-reactive. Basically, it doesn't conduct electricity. So it's obviously, in terms of nature, would help the outside of a building. It's why people don't get rashes usually from gold crosses. It's non-reactive. There's an antisepsis to it. There's a sense that somehow it's safe. Again, a great thing for us to know about the cross. The cross we're carrying with Jesus today, everyone here is called a little bit more to non-reactiveness. Because when we face our crosses, we sometimes get depressed, sometimes get lonely, sometimes get lost, we sometimes doubt. We obviously all have fear. We react to whatever cross is placed across our path. And Jesus is telling everyone, don't react so much to what's going on in your life right now. There's a non-reactiveness we're called to. Also, don't you think we live in a time and a place in which our culture, in which our political dialogue, we need to be a little bit less non-reactive and more interactive? To realize also that as we carry our personal cross, every person who's going to cross your path this next week is carrying their own cross. We are all the walking crucified. What Jesus tells us is don't react to people in negative ways because you have absolutely no idea what cross they're carrying right now. In fact, what he asks us to do is do what he did on the way to the cross, what his disciples did, always come back to the fact that he has come and he's carrying everyone's cross in his own way for their own good. And he's going to walk with us. He's going to ask us, don't react so much. Interact with people in the mystery, in the shadow of salvation that comes to us from on high in the person of Jesus. So over this next week, maybe as we get ready for the great mysteries of Easter, turn down the volume of reaction in your life right now. Maybe you should be a little more quiet. Pray more. That's why taking care of the poor is so important to us. We just give it away. We can't react. We can't be prejudiced. We can't be racist. We, can't, we just have to be like Jesus, open to the possibility of his Father, whose voice came from heaven in his unfolding of glory, and says, this is my beloved Son. And I care for him. And that same God, through Jesus, cares for all of us, tells us to react less, interact more, and maybe just be a little bit more quiet as we carry faithfully and patiently and courageously our cross and help other people carry their crosses. Finally, the last thing about crosses is that sense that somehow when we're carrying it, we feel absolutely alone. We feel like things aren't going to unfold neatly. We celebrate and sometimes hit each other over the head with crosses. What we're called to do is realize that what the cross does for us is it makes us luminous. That's the other thing the guy told me. It's, crosses, Father, are an agent of luminosity when they're golden. What does it mean? We're supposed to shine. Everyone shine this next week. Maybe even in the midst of your own crosses, you know, it's really possible. I believe that Jesus, even when he's carrying the cross and as we go towards Good Friday and remember those stations we pray, notice what he did. He interacts with his mother, with the women of Jerusalem, with Simon of Cyrene. I think Jesus just always tried to reach out to people and tried to shine forth the goodness of the sacrifice that he was making so that they and their lives could shine for each other and for this world of ours that needs it more than ever. So everyone, shine up this next week. Be bright. Let's be golden. Let's celebrate the powerful goodness that even in the darkness that encroaches upon us sometimes with the crosses we're carrying, God's glory can shine through us if we let Jesus carry our cross and do the best we can this next week, as we move towards the great feast of Easter, make the world a little brighter. I do a lot of public speaking after these uh, 35 years of priesthood, and a couple weeks ago I, I was asked to give a, a talk, and I'm learning over the years just to get to know your audience before you even carry on and, and to get to know what demographic they are. It was a group of 20, 30 somethings, so people who are a little bit about half my age and just younger. And so I was talking, and I said, you know, um, and I, in, in this, I made a reference. I said, I, it was like my dad, Leo. It's like, it's, like when, you know, it's like when he used to listen to Paul Harvey on the transistor. And then all of a sudden, this girl raised her hand. She goes, Father, <laughs> who's Paul Harvey? And then another guy raised his hand. He goes, what's a transistor? So everyone, we all know a transistor. For those of us of a certain age, remember the little transistor? Let me ask you this. 
what is Paul Harvey? On the count of three, would you please say out loud what Paul Harvey was famous for? Say it together. The rest of the story. You know, that's, that's what the turn is now. We're going to get the rest of the story coming up these next weeks. Because this isn't the final story. The crosses we carry are not the final end. The cross of Jesus always leads to what we've already celebrated and will remember again in a few weeks. The rest of the story, if you trust in the cross and its glory, you'll share in the resurrection and its glory. Jesus Christ. So we're moving towards Easter Sunday, a time of resurrection. This next week, especially with whatever's going on in the crosses we're carrying, we hold tightly to that cross and give it to Jesus. We interact with each other, try to be kinder and more loving, and then with good deeds, especially in our almsgiving for the poor, we shine brightly. For Jesus Christ, the King of the universe, has conquered sin and darkness. Through us will shine on this broken world. Let us stand and pray our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and, and his kingdom will have, have no end. end. I, believe I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the powerful goodness of Jesus Christ, we turn to our Lord in prayer. That the church will follow Christ's path of service and self-sacrifice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations will seek peace and reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that non-believers will find a clean heart and come to know Christ through the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who are preparing for initiation into the church, particularly our own elect, will be renewed with a steadfast spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the cathedral benefactors and friends, for those who join us by radio or live stream, for the sick and those who care for them, for our sister parish, La Sagrada Familia, for all those of other faith traditions, for all intentions written in our book of intercessions, and for the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, may God's love and mercy surround them and bring them to his everlasting kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For Reverend Quentin Heck, for whom this Mass is intended, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We rejoice, Heavenly Father, at the power of love. Give us courage and strength, patience, peace. We pray with Mary and Joseph, with Patrick and all the saints, everything in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joys of minds and hearts made pure so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, fully entered the Passion, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks, you've held us worthy. To be in your presence, minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. 
Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope. Jerome, our Archbishop, James and Geoffrey, our auxiliaries and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed St. Joseph, with St. Patrick, our diocesan patron, St. John the Evangelist, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. Praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, look on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
we continue on in our Lenten journey, just to let you know, we need you to please remember the almsgiving project this year of not only the cathedral, but the family of five parishes is for the Open Door Cafe. And so we now are gradually expanding more and more. Everyone, six days a week, we're serving about 120 homeless a day. Uh, and what, I, what I did was I hired a, a cook, and so now it's not just sandwiches and that, hot lunches. And so we're doing that for the poor. So we have hot lunches. Also, we have a dining room manager. Both the cook used to be someone who used to go to the Kinship Community Food as a client. And also the dining room manager was one of our homeless who now we got him an apartment and he's managing things. And so it's just a great way for us to move the needle a little bit in terms of poverty. It all obviously costs money. So the almsgiving is for the open door to let you know it costs about $5,000 a week to run that. And so we're working hard on that. Where we're at right now in terms of the family of five, I just checked. People through their sacrifices have given about almost $30,000 to keep our, our ship afloat. So please everyone, by Easter, I'd like it to be double that if we could. So please uh, maybe just uh, think about having one less uh, Starbucks and give me five grand. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> the celebration of God's goodness to us, you know, to love the poor is to love Jesus Christ. And we wanna be that to the church and to the world as we lift the tide up for everyone and move forward to the glory of the cross for all of us as Jesus walks with us and gives us new hope. Let's stand and close our prayer. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We pray for peace in our troubled world. The world, words of St. Francis, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning we are pardoned. In dying, we are born to eternal life, always invoking the saints for help. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, the other evil spirits, who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Every time we gather, people take Holy Communion to visit the homebound, the sick. We send them forth in the name of Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads, pray for God's Lenten blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you.